It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back, your Live with Expresso. Time to inspire you to explore the world and grow. The Matrix in Antarctica competition provided every single Matrix student in South Africa with the opportunity to enter to become one of the five unbelievably lucky students to go on a five-day scientific expedition, if you will, to Antarctica. Well, the study tour will be led by world-renowned explorer Rian Munzer and a distinguished team of uh, professors from the University of Stellenbosch. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> this year, the trip, I don't know how many times I've said unfortunately, this year, <laughs> but it has been postponed until November due to a COVID-19 outbreak in Antarctica with the expedition going to Mauritius in the meantime. It's a tough life, man, but somebody's <laughs> got to do it. Uh, Rian, along with Stenabosch lecturer Delisha Davids and one of the matric winners, Annika LaRue, joins us in studio this morning. morning. Guys, welcome. Cheers, Graham. You look great this morning. <laughs> so vital and full of energy. Shame, it's very kind of you to say. It's really, I don't know how you guys do it, so. <laughs> oh, buddy, you, you're the most positive human being I think that I've ever been lucky enough to interview. <laughs> So I would imagine you're rolling with the punches, but a bit Ooh. of a disappointment. I know how much you invest emotionally in this trip. You know what it does for the, the young'uns that you take with you. How disappointed are you that you're having to shift gears? No, we were extremely disappointed. Firstly, people just assume, you know, that a guy like me is just so positive, which was, it was <laughs> devastating. Eh, Graham, we got the news. It was me never, ever giving up. And that Zoom call, I want, didn't want the guys to go. I kept saying, yeah, but what can we do? Can we take another plane? What can we do? I will throw them there. I will yes. throw them there myself. <laughs> It was sort of that attitude. Eventually the guy said, Rian, we got to go. And, you know, I knew I had to face all of them and, and tell them, you know, what's the solution. So it was very disappointing, but we found a solution. Why is this so important to you? You've, I've had the opportunity of interviewing some of the alumni, those that have come through this life-changing experience. Annika, you've got just the most amazing adventure awaiting. But what was the motivation to do this? Why take young people on the, some of the footsteps that you've... Graham, it's done. absolutely panning out for me. Hey, I, I'd love to be able to sit here and say that I knew exactly how I was going to feel and what was going to happen. You know, we were people like Delisha who, who are absolutely changing the way these guys see the world. You know, I fulfill a small role, but it started basically because of this COVID-19 situation where I had to think out of the box. I wasn't allowed to travel. Everybody knows me for travel, and here I'm sitting at home twiddling my thumbs saying, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I'd always wanted to do something with students. I thought it was going to be university students. And then it landed up being in the matrix, and I'm so glad it is because we find gems like this. <laughs> Why are you a gem, Annika? What <laughs> sets you apart? Now, I've got to say congratulations because I know a lot of students are vying for this, and as I've said, it is life changing. How do you feel knowing that you have the opportunity to work with this incredible human being, this amazing team, and embark on what will be a life changing adventure? I'm so, so excited. Um, I think already part of the prize is just that when Marianne is going with us. So <laughs> Such an amazing, and also Alicia, um, such amazing people, and I think they're going to play a big role in the learning part of this experience. Um, Brian will, <laughs> definitely will. <laughs> I love it. Delisha, why is something like this so important? Because you've clearly gone all in, and you're yeah. backing this, Absolutely. and you will know what this means for your students. Why is this such an important, such an amazing opportunity, do you think? Sure, I think, I mean, even for me, I have traveled a little bit, but going to Antarctica would be such an amazing experience, and I'm imagining, you know, setting my foot on that ice um, the first time. But I think in terms of, so I teach environmental education at Stellenbosch, and I suppose the experiential part of the learning is what I'm most interested in. It's being able to really see what climate change looks like um, by doing all of the experiments, but then feeling how it feels to really embody the experience. You know, you see and listen through um, all of your senses, and that's really how change works. It's not a lecturer standing in front of, of a class saying, this is what Antarctica looks like, and you know, these are the factors that influence climate change. It is that visceral experience of feeling and seeing, um, and then taking that throughout your, your life, yeah. So, absolutely. And if you come up against any conspiracy theorist naysay, you can say, well, when I was in Antarctica, Antarctica um, last month I happened to yeah. see this is crazy this is the kind of thing that that most people dream about their whole life what are you most excited about yeah. at the prospect of, of <laughs> doing something that that literally a handful of people get to do uh, I'm excited definitely for the adventure part of it um, the camping the swimming all the 
um, scary but fun stuff, <laughs> but also the learning part because I've realized um, when I experience stuff firsthand, I truly make a change in my lifestyle. So I think experiencing maybe global warming and seeing what effects um, I've had will definitely have a big role in my um, experience. It's going to be standing in front of the UN in like <laughs> three and a half months. I, I can feel it. I can I see so. it. Yeah. Oh, as a proud papa, as a proud worm. Uh, <laughs> what do you hope that the youngsters will get out of it? In fact, everybody that's connected with us, because not just them that grow, you also seem to grow a huge amount through this. No, of course I do. Please, man, it's, it's all of us. You know, Delisha even plays it down. She's going to be a changed person. I think <laughs> every, we're just all changed people. We all know we sometimes travel for the weekend to Paternoster and we come back different people, hey, Graham? So yeah. um, it, it's, it's exactly that. How do we define it and say, do we make a change in Anika and the way she sees the world? The problem is, I think, in the world related to the environmental issue. And it comes from the academics, the students, and people like you who sometimes talk about it all day, is that we see it from different angles. And we don't understand that a girl from Kailicha and a boy from Santon see this thing, the environment, totally differently and we're saying Relative. solve it Relative, yeah. and how are we going to get into these minds to actually go into an academic space and and actually say these are the changes we're going to make we don't need another activist in front of the un actually yeah. we don't we need somebody who's going to change something yeah completely i don't know if you heard that you could have been going to Patra Nostra, but <laughs> <laughs> thankfully thankfully it's mauritius then it's antarctica we'll take it yeah. um guys congratulations once again i'm glad that we are getting the adventure going regardless of the challenges my brother so congratulations on that i'm going to ask them to stick around we're going to chat a little bit more about the impending adventures lives will be changed and an opportunity i think for all of us to take cognizance of where the world is right now yes climate change is a thing <laughs> it's my feel good breakfast show. Ooh, welcome back you're still live with espresso and oh, we're going to continue to be inspired right now we mentioned a little bit earlier that the matrix in antarctica antarctica expedition has been postponed until november this year but that it has now presented another opportunity for the competition winners and everyone else involved to explore a different part of the world in the meantime now i think for most people we see mauritius as this ideal wonderland it conjures up thoughts of idyllic beaches pristine blue waters i mean just take a look at that but little do we know the environmental issues the island faces right now from water shortages and water pollution to endangered bird species not to mention of course in a recent oil spill that back in 2020 a japanese vessel plowed into mauritius's eastern coral reef a major disaster now rion along with stenenbosch lecturer delisha davids and one of the matric winners a very lucky annika larue join us in studio this morning i mean looking at the pictures of mauritius great if you're going to go anywhere go to mauritius it's beautiful but it's become a bit of a litmus test for where the environment is right now why change lanes and why go to mauritius well firstly the crisis that we had we didn't have antarctica on the card so yeah. we, we had to i had to make a few phone calls and it was to like british airways who said listen we can help you and those guys were able to give us a few destinations i think one of them being mauritius i think with the COVID testing we didn't want to go through that same yeah. um, pathway where we were going to get expelled again that was the first reason Graham, i've been then, there my man <clears throat> and then uh, we wanted to find a place where we could sit with Annika and them and Delisha, of course, having um, a classroom that she could say, listen, look at this. And I've told you about this, but look at this, you know, yeah. behind her. And you touch on things like the extinction of birds. We all know that Dodo went extinct in Mauritius. Now, we don't want another bird to go extinct yeah. in Mauritius. The, the pink pigeon, the, the Mauritian kestrel, they're so endangered that we're talking about like a handful of breeding pairs. We Our generation Anika will see it. Spot yeah, on. We, we, hope, we hope not. Yeah. So we want Annika and them to look at this pink pigeon fluffing about in the trees and saying, what do I actually do about it? Not just going on honeymoon to Mauritius as a destination. Delisha, as, as someone who plays around in the environmental space, who has to often conjure this image in the imagination of your students to actually be there and have them experience this firsthand, but also to see the other side of it, because I'm sure most people's perceptions of Mauritius are exactly that, white beach, blue water, perfect world, but it's not the case. How important is it to have those firsthand experiences and what do you think they're going to get out of that experience in Mauritius? Yeah. 
So, I mean, I think the first, so obviously having this additional destination is incredible because now you have three contexts of learning. So we first did Grootvaardersbosch, which is a Cape Nature Reserve, um, where we did some of the beginning experiments with the students, and now we can have Mauritius, and then in November we, we get Antarctica. Um, and I still can't, you know, I'm pinching myself, really. <laughs> but I think it's, it, you know, these three different contexts in which the learning is happening, so three different classrooms per se. I think the most important thing is being able to see how environmental issues are handled differently in these contexts. I mean, we all have different, different political structures, um, the economics of the place is different, how our, we as humans interact with the biophysical so space. Is Absolutely. Different, yeah. And when we talk about the environment, really, we're not just talking about the, the biophysical stuff. It's not just about the birds, but it is our interaction with that. Um, and I suppose I think that is probably the most, most important and the most exciting thing because these, these, these three different destinations that is a, a little bit of a microcosm of the entire globe, you know? So I think absolutely being able to see how these different contexts um, play out and being able to experience it firsthand is going to be the, the most important thing. You're going to ruin her for life, though, because then <laughs> next year you're going to be like, ah, I need to go to Antarctica to show them this lesson. It's just not going to work without the snow. Annika, you get to go on two trips now this year, which is an added bonus. Uh, I've got to ask about your bigger picture, because uh, you're very young, and I'm not saying, like, lock it down right now, but you seem very driven, and obviously that's been identified in you. Mm. What do you want to achieve? What's your long-term goal? Uh, I, I don't think uh, I want to put the environment as a goal. I think I rather want to incorporate it in my lifestyle. So I think if you take care of something, you, you um, care about something, then uh, later on it, doesn't, it shouldn't be a goal. It should rather be part of your lifestyle. It should be natural. It should be just flowing. And you, should be, um, you shouldn't think about it. Later on, it should just flow out of you. Mm. I think you chose the wrong person. She's <laughs> not keen on the environment. So maybe you want to go. But how's that thinking? How fresh is that? That we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't be sitting here saying, I want to be the activist. I want to create a program. How backward am I trying to create a program that's environmentally focused when Annika's saying, we should be, be sitting around talking about how our lifestyle saves the environment? That's should what be all of us. Do. And it is. And right down to how we make choices as a consumer. What you buy, what earbuds you buy. Lifestyle. Things like that. It's lifestyle. Yeah. So you had to answer the question, if saving the environment is a global problem, how do you think you can help? Can you paraphrase what you said? Uh, <laughs> so I submitted my project for the competition and my idea was to um, implement glass into my community by collecting jars from local high schools in Paul and then taking these jars to a local soup kitchen, Magda Soup Kitchen, and Tani Magda, she receives... Um, food. Tani Magda! <laughs> yeah. She receives food from different supermarkets, which is already um, packaged, so she has to remove the initial packaging and repackage it into smaller quantities to ensure that as many people as possible get food. So this glass jars would be, then be used to eliminate that repackaging and um, she also wouldn't have to buy plastic um, packaging for the products, and that eliminates the plastic. And then um, the community receiving the food in the glass jars can return the jars to be refilled and used again. <laughs> Drop all that. Eh? Cool, yeah. <laughs> Why do we even need you anymore, man? We have <laughs> sorted. I'm so excited for what you're going to experience. I mean, we have literally seen, and, and Rian can uh, testify to the fact that it is life-changing. You're going to gain so much. You're going to learn so much. You're going to experience so much. And you're with a wonderful group of people. I think this goes to all of you that you're going to have the most amazing 2022. Please, <laughs> can it be that? Um, if you come back and say you've cancelled and now you're going to Iceland or something, I'm not going to accept it. Now, please travel safely in Enjoy it. Um, good luck. I know there's still a few challenges ahead, so, so face them bravely. Um, but we're going to continue to explore beautiful Mauritius because that's where they're going to explore in an effort for us to learn more about our environment um, and, most importantly, how we interact with it. Mm.